Ah, oh, that was a lovely night's sleep we had here. The boat hardly moved all night. I didn't even know that the other two boats had gone, but the sun's all the way up there, although he's hiding behind clouds somewhere. I'm quite late getting out of bed. Seven o'clock, that's pretty late for me. Um, so I had a look round, everyone's gone, nobody's up yet, or I thought nobody's up yet, and then I heard a little noise somewhere in the cliffs, and I seen a man waving to me, up there, with his fishing rod out already, and his tent. Well, I hope he's not there tomorrow, because today is the calm. The calm before the storm. So we've got to motor around and make use of this calm. We've got a motor around Castle Martin firing range which pushes us well away from the land for a bit. But I don't suppose we're going to notice the day disappear. The sun's coming out now. Lisa's just got out of bed, so we'll do a little twirl to say good morning to you. Show you how pretty it is out here, with no wind whatsoever. She just banged a leg. <laughs> you got to laugh, haven't you? Go on the wrong side of the cardinal, boy. Because there's nothing to avoid. Not when the water looks like this. There's a, not a ripple or a ruffle anywhere. Completely different day than yesterday. Would you believe it? Well, there's a ship. Maybe he'll make a little bit of a wake in the water when he's gone. But at the moment, nobody's making any wakes in it whatsoever, except me. And what we're doing is tiny. Virtually not even disrupting it. And there's nothing behind us to say we've been. I'm doing my best to try and read the sky to see what says there's a storm coming tomorrow. I get those low clouds, but it doesn't work with me. Even the barometer's happy and staying still. The six knots of wind are just about moving through the air. Even the longer six knots, I suppose. We're pushing the last of the tide coming into the Bristol Channel, but we're not too bothered because that means it's going to turn a little bit and give us a bit of a lift. But not much. Um, We'll have to fight it then going into the Milford Haven. But now we've just got a bit of wind. We're going to be able to sail past the inside of the table bank and, and into the uh, Milford Haven itself. It don't actually matter when you get the sails up and get them going. On a day that you're not expecting to um, have any sailing at all, it becomes a nice Brucey bonus. There's odd boats knocking round, having a little bit of fun in this light airs. And I dare say there'll be a few more in the channel having to play. But we're going to just drift down with it now. We've got plenty of time. And now we're being chased by a ship. We'll just stay out of the main passage. And there's a yacht behind us down there. Coming along. He looks big enough to fly past us in a bit. There's the ship there, that Monopoly house. And that's all the wind we've got there. And that's our speed through the water, if you believe it. And that's our speed over the ground. And we're actually pushing a little bit of current. Look what he's pushing. They don't half shove some water, them things. And that's why I stay out of his way. Here's Mr Lobster Man. That's a funny name for a man, isn't it? And someone actually going the right way with the tide. Although he's tacking, it might be one great big long tack right the way down if he's lucky. And this is the chap who was sailing along behind me. He's give up sailing. What a beautiful boat that is. A moody. Ooh. And there's Stephen on Celtic Spirit just shouting hello as he goes past. Ah, yeah. The boats are coming thick and thin, going the opposite way to me. Is there something that I don't know? Well, I'm going to continue to head in because I think tomorrow's a day that we require some shelter. The wind's built a little bit. I got up to 14, 15 knots now. Very lucky running down here. See, I'm almost keeping up with him. Not really. But I'm giving it a little bit of a go. I got a tiny little bit of a bow wave myself. Not a massive one, but a tiny little bit of one. And I'm making my way down against the tide, which makes me very happy. Hell of a river, really. The Milford Haven. It seems to be able to mix industrialization and nature to an excellent blend. And your eyes have got a good feast all the way down it. You don't get bored at any point and you just enjoy the sailing if you're getting it. And look, somebody else escaping. There's something I don't know, I'm sure. When I arrive, I think I'm just about to go in. 
And I thought to myself, well, do I want to go in forwards? No, I don't want to go in forwards because the wind's going to be coming down here like Billy O tomorrow when the blow comes. So I really need to be facing into that. So I'll go in backwards. And just as I was pulling the bow round to bring the stern in, the boat was caught by a good gust of wind. You can just see a little bit of it on the water, but it starts pushing me, as you can see, across here. So I think, well, I've got to get out of here. So I'll have to go forward again. And I'm getting close to these boats now, and I don't want to hit anything, because that's not magical at all. So we need to go back outside, regain, and then come back in. And poor Lisa, she doesn't know whether she's coming or going at the moment, so she'll just have to put up with me. So I moved the boat out into a bit more clearer water, and you can see the wind on Lisa's jumper. There's quite a bit of it here, so when I go to go backwards, I can feel it pushing me trying to sail the boat forwards so I have a little bit to fight and Swallow she actually doesn't like going backwards at all so it was a bit of a hard manoeuvre just to turn it round at the end there with the wind whistling past so I know I'm in for some fun now that I'm coming back in again so I tell Lisa I say we're gonna go port side two going in backwards but are we gonna go port side two going in backwards let's find out well, it looks like Lisa's got no confidence anyway, because when she goes to get ready, then she gets unready and thinks, I'm just going to stand here and wait for him to do something sensible because he's overshooting this. And she's absolutely right. I'm overshooting it. It's not my fault, though. Look at these two pegs here. Watch. That's not magic. That's gusts of air. And every time I go to do something, a gust comes from somewhere and blows me bow or me stern. But basically, it's pushing me bow the wrong way now. I'm trying to fight that at the moment to get the bow to port. And I can't fight it because the gust got a little bit too strong for me. Which means I'll end up past where the berth is for coming back into it. So now I've got myself ending up going into a corner, which is the last thing in the world I want. Look at the pegs. You see the gusts on the pegs. That's what I'm dealing with. Those gusts that keep coming through. So now I've got to try and turn the boat round so I don't get stuck down the end of this leg against the side without the manoeuvring area. And believe it or not, I haven't got much area in front or behind the boat. Probably got three metres at best to play with either end. Now it sounds like plenty, three metres, but it's not when you've got to make some movements to get some rudder grip, because there's the bow being blown off again. I'm trying to get the bow to port. This is when you miss that little friendly button, isn't it? So my plan comes to be get behind the boat as close as you can get to it. For the reason he'll take the wind off you and then you can try and bring your bow around get the wind off the bow so use another boat to do so and that's the method i'm doing now but as i'm going backwards again the wind's starting to pick the bow up and shove the bow over this ain't doing me any favors at all this i'm gonna to have to try a little bit harder i should get it really on the next maneuver if I can just get the bow through the eye of the wind and you can see the wind direction of what's coming on the water there in front of me, if I can just get the bow through it, just about there is the eye of the wind. I should be able to, when I come backwards straight then, be able to get a bit of a turn in. And when I get this turn in, I don't think I'm going to try all this again. I think there just isn't the room for me to do it. So it looks like I'm going to have to go bow in instead of staying in anyway. But at least one thing happened. I had a good practice of how not to be able to back the boat into a bay while the wind's blowing too hard for me. And if you look at the moment, I'm just letting the wind push the boat back round. It's the easiest way to do it sometimes. So here's the berth on our put. It's, it's to the port, but it's the we're starboard side too, which means the fenders are going to be on the starboard side. That one right in front of us with the motorboat next to it. And coming into view on the picture on the pontoon now on the left of the screen is Adam. And he's thought, I'm making the right pickle of this, so I'll best get down there and catch Mike's lines. And now Lisa's just realised she's on the wrong side if we're going in bow first. But with a little bit of help from your friends, you get in anyway, so I'll take it in the easy way, which is always bow first. Tie it up and then we'll move it round so she'll be sticking out the other way once I've actually um, got the engine off and got to manpower instead of horsepower. Well, it don't take long to get quickly tied on the finger for a minute and a quick conflab between us all, and we decide we're going to spin it round and have it facing into the wind anyway. 
But we walked the bow out with the ropes and let the wind do the rest, bring the stern in and then tie it back up. The next day, however, it poured down and it blew and it rained like buckets were coming out the sky. The rain was travelling more or less sideways. All good fun. Till next time, bon voyage.